Hey everyone, so I'm out on a photo job, so I thought I'd take you along with me, uh, as I do sometimes. And uh, this is a rather small office. I never know what I'm going to run into uh, when I go to a property, but they're usually pretty consistent. We usually have like these uh, white tile ceilings, which I always like, and then uh, it's vacant. But I'd say 9 out of 10 properties that I do are just uh, vacant, ready to be sold. But uh, when I come into a property, uh, first thing I like to do is I'll just uh, turn on all the lights. And then while I'm turning the lights on, I look for a place that I can, uh, you know, kind of hide my bag so it doesn't get in the picture. And then declutter uh, if I need to. Uh, for example, first thing I saw when I came in today were these uh, paint cans. The problem with fluorescent lights sometimes is, um, you know, they give this green cast. And another thing I'm seeing is they painted the, the bottom part of the wall green. But fortunately, there's white ceilings. So I can just white balance to that in post-processing. You'll notice maybe how the uh, toilet seat is up. So I always put those down. This is probably a utility closet. Yeah, we don't care about that. I think what I'll do is I'll put the paint cans into this utility closet and my bag and we'll unload. So I've had this bag for oh gosh about eight, eight or nine years now and it's been my favorite bag since uh, I bought it. Maybe you guys have seen my video when I did used to do reviews on bags and things but anyhow I just brought my EM1 Mark III with the uh, 7 to 14 F4. It's the uh, Panasonic version it has that purple flaring, but I can work around it. For a little while, I was using my 8mm fisheye, but I decided that uh, it's just easier to use a rectilinear lens than correcting the fisheye every time I have to do a shoot. Um, but anyhow, I have uh, this is my Godox V1, which will provide supplementary light, but mainly to uh, act as a trigger, a radio trigger to control my Godox 8200. And honestly, in a small space like this, this is probably enough light, but uh, this one I can hand hold and hold over my head and stuff. And of course, my tripod, uh, I switched over to the Manfrotto. I got this from David Crooks, uh, his, this uh, used. But this is the, uh, looks like the O55X Pro B. Great tripod, really solid, <laughs> and very, very steady and nice and tall when I need it to be. And then on top, I have my, uh, this is a Benro gear head. I forget which model it is. It probably says on here somewhere, but I can't read it. <laughs> it's too small. So the other thing I like to do is I like to have the height of the tripod about halfway between the ceiling and the floor. These are like pretty low. These are like eight foot ceilings, especially when there's no furniture, because when there's tables and desks and counters and things like that, I actually shoot um, higher like this so that I can get the tops of the tables. And then I just do a little bit of, you know, uh, what do they call it? The skewing correction, just level. But that's probably about right now. Yeah, perfect. Because what this, by having it sort of centered in the room, it also helps eliminate um, uh, this, what do you call it? The skewing, perspective, what's it called in the, uh, in the camera? Uh, I have to look it up. Just slide the camera. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but I just eyeball it. Now you may have noticed that the uh, camera is crooked. And 
the other thing I got for this tripod was a leveling base type of center pole. So I will just align this back up. And I have a little bubble level here that will help. And then I can make any fine tuning adjustments using the knobs here. That looks so pretty level. I'm using the grid lines to make sure that the line's pretty centered. I need to come up a little bit there. I always have to remind myself, C1 will be my bracketed shot where I do uh, three shots plus or minus two EV. And then um, C2 I have set up for my flash shot and that's uh, set up to one two fiftieth of a second at 5.6. And uh, C3 is just a uh, another bracketed shot. It's not really bracketed, but uh, C3 I usually use outside, and I bracket in uh, 0.3 EV steps, and uh, then just pick the best one out of those uh, for the outdoor shot. So for indoors, usually I'm just switching between C1 and C2. So I take my bracketed shot and then my uh, flash shot. And, in, you know, it's just good practice to do that, but in, when I actually go into post-processing, I usually end up just using the uh, zero EV shot uh, to blend with the flash shot. Uh, but it's always good to have a little bit of uh, wiggle room if you need it. I have a little strap. I usually just hang this 8200 around my neck. But since this is a small property, I can probably just hand hold this the whole time. And... Uh, hang it off the uh, tripod if I need to. And with commercial properties, usually the floors are pretty level all the way up throughout the property, so I don't normally have a problem. Residential properties, I'm constantly fiddling with these dials every time I move from one room to the next. Uh, but any Okay, in a room like this, um, gosh, I don't need hardly any flash power at all. Even though the sunlight's coming in, and brightening the, the space a little bit. It's not that much. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm guessing I need only about a quarter power on both of these. So I'm just going to do a quick test shot. And let's see what we get. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to delete that. That looks good. And then with every room, I like to get two angles. Uh, usually, you know, I'll go stand in a corner and get, get the front and then stand in the other, other corner and then get it from the back side and do that for each room. And this is a property I can probably do in about 30 minutes. So again, I'm not too worried about the green walls. So I'm going to put this in C1 and back up to the corner as much as I can. So what I do is I put this leg back into this corner so that gets the tripod as far back as possible. And then I focus about one third of the way into the room. Um, that'll give me a decent hyperfocal distance at f5.6. So, and I just use the touch screen and we're good. Let's do the flash shot, so I'll go to C2. And I'm gonna use the same focus point. All right, so the rest of the rooms in this office are exactly the same as the first couple I've done. So I'm just gonna rinse and repeat, and I'll be done in about probably 10 more minutes. All right, so I'm not going to need to use the flashes outdoors, so I just uh, put them away here in my bag. And uh, we'll go out and do maybe two shots of the exterior because it's just this one small level. So really just the front door. And then maybe of the parking lot so people get a feel of, you know, how much parking there is because that's a, that's a big deal uh, with office spaces. I'm going to hold the tripod up. I like to get a high shot kind of looking down if I can.
All right, so what I'm going to do now is just get the front door with this window because this is the same office. The other thing I have to be careful of is make sure I'm not in one of the reflections of the window. So if I can, I stand where the brick is like I am now so that uh, the reflection of the camera or myself won't be in the windows. All right, let's get a picture of the parking lot. I'd like to get this parking lot you know, on the side here with all of this, but this tree is in the way. So what I'll do is, um, I, I don't like this construction over here. So that's why, you know, I would normally go to that corner, but I don't think this side is quite as sightly. It's a little unsightly. So what I'll do is, um, I think I'll move maybe to this corner and yeah this will work I can get I can get the whole whole scene in all right that's it for this job they didn't want to do any video for the job so otherwise I would have took maybe another 20 30 minutes because again, it's such a small space, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Now I recorded everything to both memory card slots, but I'm going to take one out and keep that in my pocket. I don't normally do that, but I'm doing that today because uh, I'm going to the uh, Imaging USA conference and I'm going to have to park in the parking garage. So if somebody happens to break into my car and take my camera gear, I'll still have the photos I did today, so just a precaution. But you can see, I did that whole job. I do probably 90% of my jobs with just this little setup here and this tripod. Man, I'm hungry. I think what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna grab lunch before I go back to the convention because when I was there the other day, they were charging $16 for a hamburger and fries, no drink. I was like, man, I can't do that. So I'll try and find a McDonald's or something here that I can grab a quick bite before I get there.